Hello folks, my name is Mayank Devir and we are going to start this lecture second part 2. In this lecture we are going to discuss some things from last part. So let's discuss the other dimensions of evolution of Paleolithic and Mesolithic man. The Paleolithic man was not aware of fire because of this the food was consumed in a raw form in a Paleolithic age and the fire was discovered during the Mesolithic age the knowledge of fire made human life more convenient and, and safer. So as a result of the knowledge of fire, man started consuming roasted food. During the Mesolithic period, a number of other technical achievements also took place. For example, for the first time, man was aware of the projectile missile in Mesolithic period. The hunting became much easier for man. So this is it for the last part of the lecture. Let's discuss about the development of various pottery cultures. The earliest evidence of pottery in Indian subcontinent was found at Chopani Mando, which is in which is in Belan River Valley, Allahabad, Uttar Pradesh. During the initial history, the pots were handmade and these were the thick and unrefined pots. Later on, when the wheel was invented, the wheel turned pots were thin and far more refined. With the passage of time, number of pottery culture emerged in Indian subcontinent. These phases of human life are identified with a particular type of pottery. So, for example, the black and red ware of pottery culture, which flourished in Indian subcontinent during 2000 BC and 180. These pots were black from inside and near ring and red from the outside. This typical color was attained through inverted fire method. The second one, or culture or orchid culture, orchid colored pottery culture. It flourished in Gangetic Valley during 2000 BC and 1500 BC. So you can see during the later Harappan period, the grey ware pottery was during 1000 BC to 600 BC and, and it was a pottery culture of later Vedic period. They were grey in color and they have paintings in blue color on them. Northern black polished square were used in northern India from Taxila to Bengal during 600 BC to 180. This was a pottery of Mahajanpadas. It was refined during second urbanization phase, the modern age and postmodern age. The Orientine wares. The Orientine wares was Roman pottery. This was in darkish red color and it began to be used during 180. Basically, it was nothing but red terracotta wares. When I say terracotta wares, terracotta means nothing but mitti ke bartan jinne ki fire se pakaya gaya ho. Let's talk about red slipped ware. These were the pottery which was brought by Kushanas. It was used during 180 to 680, which is Gupta and post Gupta period. This is it for the potteries. Let's talk about early pastoral and agriculture communities or EPEC. When we are talking about EPEX, for example, the EPEC can be megalithic, can be Neolithic, can be Chalcolithic. When we are talking about megalithic, the examples are from Mehargar, Baluchistan, Neolithic, Belan Valley, Mirzapur, Uttar Pradesh, or Kaitha culture, or Charcolithic, it was Kalisin River, Madhya Pradesh, usually epic symbolized Neolithic age, and when the pastoral and agriculture communities emerged in any region, the Neolithic age commenced in that particular part of Indian subcontinent. So, as I told in earlier lectures, the Neolithic age depends on its characters. So, let's talk about the characterization of epic first, the settled village life, second, cultivation of food grains like wheat, barley, rice, Bee, lentils, lentils means masoor, masoor ki dal. Domestication of animals like goat, ram, ram is sheep meal. And in some areas, buffalo were also domesticated. In some areas, ox were domesticated. That's all for domestication. During this epic time, the houses were made of sun dried bricks and thatched roof. Thatched roof means the roof which is bamboo roof or roof which is covered with some kind of grass. Tools and implements were also made of stone, metal tool. The use of metal tool was yet to be commenced. Most of these communities were unaware of metals. Okay, the economic life was subsistent and no surplus was there. During such pattern of life, the life evolved gradually in different parts of Indian subcontinent. So the time period varied greatly in case of early pastoral and agriculture communities. Let's talk about distribution of epoch or early pastoral agriculture communities. So I'm just going to call it epoch from now on lecture. The oldest evidence of epoch have been discovered from Belen Valley, Mirzapur, Uttar Pradesh. This phase of life commenced in 6000 BC. Kuldi Hawa is most prominent place. The archaeological evidences have brought to light that the people of Kuldi Hawa were aware of wild and cultivated varieties of rice in 6 millennium BC. This is a big thing. 6000 BC. So basically 8000 years ago, they were they knew different varieties of rice. They were earliest, so we can say they were the earliest producer of rice in anywhere in the world. Second example, the Bolan Valley of Baluchistan. Here, Epek emerged around 5000 BC. Archaeological evidences brought light that Mehargar was flourishing village in 5000 BC. People lived settled life there. They cultivated wheat, barley, cotton, along with the domestication of animals like goat and ram. Ram, as I told you, the male sheep. Another example of Epek in Kashmir Valley. And the, in Kashmir Valley, Epek emerged a bit late, 2500 BC or 3000 BC. Excavation carried out at places like uh, Burzum and Gafkaral have brought to light that the people of Kashmir Valley 
practiced pit dwelling they cultivated rice barley and animals like goat sheep were domesticated there ox there are some evidences of foxes there too in some cases dogs were buried with their masters in kashmir valley so this was a typical kashmir valley neolithic age it's a bit different from other parts of india or indian subcontinent in case of eastern india the epoch was around 2000 bc to 600 bc it was a bit late because in eastern up bihar and bengal for example we got chupani mandu sinnur chechar Chiran for example people of Chiran used bone tools along with stone tools around 600 BC basically the chalcolithic age was prominent in Chiran in 600 BC whereas in certain parts of indian subcontinent iron age was flourishing in case of northeast india epoch emerged around 2000 BC archaeological evidences came out in assam valley have revealed that the people of dao jali had in cultivated barley and domesticated goat sheep and also used stone tools and the excavation carried out in right bed of sambhar lake have discovered the charred food grains like in which is the grains were perhaps carried by water to the lake from the nearby area so it indicates that the food grains were cultivated in the area around sambhar lake in 5000 bc in the peninsular india the neolithic age commences around 2500 bc the archaeological excavation have revealed three phases of epoch in peninsular india the flourished during 2500 bc to 1100 bc in the first phase people were living on top of hills and they were coming down and carrying out the agriculture in nearby areas for evidences we got unrefined red brown pottery for from that period from that phase in second phase people came down from hill and started living in foothills they used red ware during this age and in third phase people moved in plains and started practicing agriculture extensively wheat barley pea were cultivated by them and along with their domestication of buffalo goat donkey etc let's talk about the significances of epoch epoch constituted an important phase of history of evolution of human life they were most advanced people of their time and, and efforts made by them prepared the background for further advancement and development in future and we can say that these communities produced their own food their survival was no longer dependent on the hunting and food gathering activities the parasitic phase of human life came to an end with this the beginning of the agriculture the tools the tool culture was in advanced state in epoch phase that the tools were made of a stronger variety of stone basically igneous stone and the people of these communities practiced varieties of professions because along with agriculture and domestication of animals pottery was also practiced and the technological advancement was also quite significant in these communities for example in mehargar we found evidences of coal filled with material coal i'm talking about teeth cleaning of teeth in some cases evidences of teeth filling are also found the progress of material culture witnessed in epoch paved the way for the progress in material culture witnessed in epoch paved the way for emergence of chalcolithic and megalithic cultures when i'm talking about megalithic culture basically mega means big lithic means rock and the use of big rocks gave the name to the culture megalithic culture and the culture flourished in peninsular india during 1100 bc to 500 bc and it was preceded by neolithic age and followed by the sangam age the cultural phase was characterized by the use of some big stone boulders around the graves these boulders are used to cover the grave and surround it most of evidences of these culture phase are discovered from these graves because of this the, this phase of human life is known as megalithic culture or megalithic phase megalithic phase almost covered the whole peninsular india India. for example jauna pani in maharashtra makshi in karnataka nagarjuni konda of andhra pradesh adi chanalur of tamil nadu trishur of kerala these are prominent places of megalithic culture megalithic people lived in villages and the thickness of debris discovered at megalithic settlements indicates that the megalithic people lived or stayed for about 50 to 100 years in one particular place and then and then they shifted to the new place megalithic people produced different type of food grains for example we get evidences of wheat and rice and the domestication of animals such as buffalo and donkey so we can simply say the agriculture was yet to reach a surplus stage but the communities were self sufficient and the discovery of iron objects from megalithic graves indicates that this cultural phase belongs to an iron age in graves some copper and bronze objects are also discovered during the excavation since copper is not found in that area which occupied by the megalithic culture so we can simply say there was trade and commerce relation with other parts of india during that age because the rajasthan copper which is available in khatri mines or jhunjhunu district of rajasthan that was the nearest copper mine for the megalithic people megalithic people used black and red pottery which was of quite high quality and some of megalithic settlement continue to flourish till the 2nd century BC and in some cases of these settlements roman coins and pottery have also been discovered these evidences suggest that the megalithic people evolved in early historic culture let's talk about chalcolithic culture for introduction we can say a new culture phase emerged in indian subcontinent around 2000 to 800 BC it was characterized by use of copper as well as stone tools this most essential feature of this phase and that is why it is known as chalcolithic culture or chalcolithic age around middle of 4 million BC man discovered the first metal which was copper and brought and gradually copper tools began to be used but the use of stone 
tools was not given up. As a result of this, the Charcoalithic culture of Charcoalithic phase commenced. The Charcoalithic culture forested in parts of Indian subcontinent during 2800 BC to 700 BC. And usually, we say in case of Harappan civilization or, or Indus Valley civilization, it was Charcoalithic civilization because in this civilization we found stone tools and as well as copper tools. And these cultures were concentrated in Western India, covering Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, and Maharashtra. This is because the copper was only found in Western India. Let's talk about the distribution of Charcoalithic culture. So, for distribution, we are going to talk about different cultures, where they flourished, and what was their time period. For example, first the Kaitha culture. The Kaitha culture, which was around 2000 BC, 2200 to 2000 BC, flourished in the river valley of Kali Sindh, Madhya Pradesh. Kaitha was the most prominent site, so that's why the name Kaitha culture. Second one, Ahar culture. Ahar or Ahar culture was flourished in the valley of Banas River in Rajasthan during 2000 BC to 1500 BC. Ahar and Huilun, Udaipur, Rajasthan were the most prominent site. Third one will be Malwa culture. Malwa as name, it flourished in parts of Gujarat and Rajasthan and some parts of Madhya Pradesh around 1600 BC to 1300 BC. Navda Toli, which is in Madhya Pradesh, was the most prominent site. Jar culture, the questions related to Malwa and Jar cultures were asked in UPPCS, UPSC both. The Jar culture flourished in Maharashtra during 1400 BC and 700 BC. Jar Namgaon and Dainawad are the prominent sites of this culture. Sawalda culture around 2000 BC to 1800 BC confined in Api River Valley but evidences from Dainawad suggest that it raised to Paravara Valley. Sawalda which is in Dhulia district of Maharashtra is a most prominent site and Rangpur culture which flourished during 1800 BC to 1400 BC most prominent site. Rangpur. Some other important cultures were Prabhas, Rangpur and Chiran. Basically Prabhas and Rangpur both in Gujarat and Prabhas, Prabhas was also called Prabhas Patan. Chiran culture 1500 BC to 750 BC which is in northern Bihar. Ancient village settlements remains. Red black pottery were found there. Similar kind of settlements have been reported from Sagura in Gorakhpur, Uttar Pradesh, Sonpur, Kaya, Bihar, Pandu Raja Dibi in Bihar and all of these settlements were during 1500 to 750 BC. Let's talk about the pattern of life in Charcoalithic culture. First, we are going to talk about the economic life, then the social life, and then the political administrative life, and the religious life. Let's talk about economic life. Charcoalithic people practiced agriculture, domesticated animals, and they were also involved in secondary acts like pottery making, metal and rock works. So, agriculture was in advanced state during the Charcoalithic phase. Of, so, the people were aware of irrigation, crop rotation and dams. Barley was the main crop of Chalcolithic period. The state of agriculture was surplus was yet to be achieved. Various kinds of art and crafts were also practiced. Copper and bronze objects were used in this phase. Pottery making was the prominent craft everywhere in Chalcolithic period. Chalcolithic people practiced trade and commerce through barter system. Let's talk about social life of Chalcolithic period. For the first time, social stratification was witnessed during the Chalcolithic period. It can be observed from the difference between the size of houses and items on grave indicates that some people were rich while some people were poor during the period as some houses were big and other were, others were small. Some graves yield gold, silver ornaments and some pieces of stones and in case of some graves they have cheap pottery, earthen bread were found and Chalcolithic period lived in village so they lived settled life. Let's talk about political administrative life. The existence of public buildings such as dam, ports in Chalcolithic settlement indicate that the, some kind of public authority was there in Chalcolithic period because without that public authority, construction and maintenance of public buildings would have been very difficult. Nothing is known definitely about the nature of nature and character of public authority in Chalcolithic period. So let's talk about religious life. From evidences, we assume that there were multiple faith and belief were practiced by people. The discovery of female figuring in large number indicates that the mother goddess was chief deity. The male figures were rare in discovery of Charcoalithic culture that indicates that the status of male deities were inferior to the female deities. The discovery of items of common use from graves indicates that the Charcoalithic people believed in the idea of life after death. The items of common use were placed with the dead bodies. A person could use them in afterlife. This also revealed that the philosophical dimension of religion had emerged during Charcoalithic period from some graves in Maharashtra. A skeleton whose lower part of feet were chopped off have been found. It is believed that the feet below ankle were cut to prevent death from turning ghost. So this is all for the Charcoalithic culture. In the next lecture, we are going to start Harappan civilization. I hope I will go as deep as possible with Harappan civilization, then Vedic age and the further ancient history. Please like, subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you. Mayang Diveri, signing off.